Hello and welcome to graphic.com.gh and from the Graphic Online TV newsroom. This is a brief. There has been some public calls for double track system under the free senior high school policy to be abolished, but the Minister of Education, Dr. Yao Osei Educhum, has cautioned that abolishing the double track system under the free senior high school policy could significantly hinder students' access to education. His remarks come in response to the opposition party, NDC, which has promised to eliminate the system as part of its educational reforms. Dr. Educhum emphasized that the government is currently working on improving infrastructure to eventually phase out the double-track system. He illustrated the system's necessity by citing examples from specific schools such as Prempe College and Opokuwari, where current enrollment practices allowed them to accommodate more students. He warned that without the double-track system, many students would be left without a place in school, as current division of student cohorts helps manage overcrowding. If I abolish double track at Opokwari today, no form one students can be enrolled there. Because the school has 4,500 students there about. And because they've been divided into three, at any point in time, 3,000 students are there. If you don't want double track and I cancel double track, 1,500 students who are going this year will not have space, so they can go. The ongoing legal dispute surrounding the anti-gay bill centers on the existence and production of financial impact analysis that the Speaker of Parliament allegedly prepared before the bill's passage. At the Supreme Court hearing today, the lawyers representing both the government and the plaintiff expressed frustration over the Speaker's failure to disclose this document despite previous claims that assist. The Chief State Attorney argued that the absence of this analysis has delayed their response in the case, emphasizing its potential significance in the court's decision. Conversely, Justice Yao Asaradako questioned the insistence of the document, requesting it should not be forcibly introduced if it might benefit the Speaker. The legal contest hints on Article 108 of the 1992 Constitution, which requires any bill impacting the national budget to be introduced by or on behalf of the President and mandates a fiscal impact assessment. The plaintiff argues that the Speaker neglected these requirements given the bill's potential financial implications, such as costs associated with incarcerating individuals convicted under its provisions. If the financial assessment is produced, it could significantly bolster the Speaker's defense in the ongoing constitutional challenge to the bill. The bill passed in February 2024 imposes severe penalty for homosexual activities and has sparked widespread debates over human rights implications in the country. President Ekofado has stated he will await the Supreme Court's ruling before taking any action on the bill. So I'm considering the application. I'm satisfied that the application has legal basis and is deserving of a favorable consideration. Let time for finding a second defendant's statement of case be extended for seven days from the date of this order. How long are most grateful? In response to a request from members of parliament for an early recall, the Speaker of Parliament has initiated plans to reconvene the House in early November. This announcement comes as the Speaker prepares to lead the Ghana Parliamentary Delegation to the 67th Commonwealth Parliamentary Association International Conference in Sydney, Australia. He has indicated he will return to Ghana earlier than originally planned to facilitate the call. The Speaker's comment followed a meeting with a five-member delegation from the Council of State, led by Chairman Nana Otuo Serbor II, 
who sought to understand the recent indefinite adjournment of the House. During this meeting, the Speaker provided insight into the legislative situation and discussed the vacancies declared for four parliamentary seats. The Council expressed their readiness to assist the Speaker and the House leadership in resolving any outstanding issues to ensure the smooth recall. Reverend Lawrence Tete has retracted and apologized to the University of Ghana over his claims that many students of the university are living with HIV. He made the comment on GTV last week during a discussion on the morning show. Reverend Tete mentioned that a high number of University of Ghana students were living with HIV, an issue he blamed on alleged promiscuity on campus. Some of these young girls and young boys already in the, on campuses campus. are living promiscuous life and they have already contracted HIV AIDS. These are some there are people I have prayed for mm. on campus as we Yes, speak. sir. And I'm not talking about 10 years, 5 years, 2 years. In fact, in the past, just recently, sometimes you come to a close world. I go to campus a lot, so some people then now, but, but it's sad. And if some of them tell you how they get into it, because what is happening is that some of these girls go to uh, uh, the places and then when they come back, they also connect with the boys and girls thing. So a lot of people think you're getting a boy or getting a girl. And on a rather sad note, an Arsenal supporter has killed a Manchester United fan in Uganda over goal celebration. Benjamin, the 36-year-old Manchester United fan, has since been laid to rest. Friends and family gathered in sorrow to bid farewell to Benjamin, the fifth of 11 children. Benjamin was reportedly assaulted on Sunday at a trading centre following an altercation that began after Arsenal and Liverpool tied 2-2 in an English Premier League match. According to reports, the clash erupted in a video hall when Liverpool scored a late equaliser promoting Benjamin to celebrate. This celebration involving thrown popcorn allegedly sparked an argument with an Arsenal fan, Onan, who then struck Benjamin with a stick after the match, leading to his death. Thank you for watching. For more news, please visit our website, graphic.com.gh, and follow us on social media. Our handles are Daily Graphic Ghana on Facebook and Instagram, Graphic Online Ghana on TikTok, and Graphic GH on YouTube and X. My name is Arabna Koba.